4, and also I want to back up into verse number 3. And uh, chapter number 3, rather, and the reading might be just a little bit lengthy. I'll try to read quickly here tonight. But to kind of bring us into where I want to preach, and it's, it won't be anything you haven't heard before, but let's, let's back up to verse number, in chapter number 3, let's back up to verse number 7, and then I'll read quickly down, and I may, I may jump around just a little bit here, but I want to get into, into chapter number 4. Hebrews chapter number 3, let's begin in verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath... They shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. You should notice that. Exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day, or as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Let us therefore fear, verse 1, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. We which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David today, after so long a time as it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, for if Jesus had given them rest, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God. You can be seated tonight. Amen. There's, there's more scripture here. And this, this whole text and whole story is, Brother Connor, it is so meaty, if I could put it that way. It's a lot to digest, but there's, there's so much good in this text tonight. And I want us to really focus on verse number one of chapter number four. And I'll be preaching some here from different places in this chapter. But I wanted to go back in chapter number three and, and give us a little bit of background and history of Israel, But let me read verse 1 in chapter number 4 again. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into His rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Let us therefore fear, or that word means to be alarmed. Now, how do you come short 
of a promise. If something is actually promised, how do you come short of it? It's not God's fault, is it? If we are promised rest, and I come short, I don't have anybody to blame. And I, you know, to me, when I really got to thinking of, of, of a promise of God, how do you come short? How do we miss? How do we not grasp a promise? Not a promise of man. Not a suggestion. Not a desire that someone else wants to make our life more comfortable or to bring us into a place of luxury or ease. You know, people have done good things for all of us and all of us could say that we have been recipients of blessings of, of mortal men. They have done good to us. And we appreciate kindness and compassion that we have felt from our fellow mankind. But when God Almighty says that He would give you a promise. How do I come short of a promise of God? Hallelujah. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into His rest, any of you should come short of it. Coming short of this promise. What was that promise of entering in to His rest? Now, one of the key things that I want to mention in, in, in this verse is His rest. Entering into His rest. This entering into God's rest. The promise, the rest that He has reserved for you and I. Now, in the previous chapter, the writer here is mentioning and talking about a generation, really a generation in verse number 10, that a generation that grieved God. The Bible said in verse number 10, Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. And then in verse number 11, God said that He swear in His wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. He was grieved with a generation that failed to enter into the rest of God. Amen. The writer here is mentioning this generation, this generation of Israel. Amen. That number one, they were doubters. And the writer here bears it out in chapter number three. They were doubting. There was unbelief concerning the promise of Canaan. Now, in a few minutes, I'll try to uh, separate the, some different types of rest that, that is mentioned in these two chapters or referred to. But we got to understand that this generation of Israel that so grieved God. Amen was full of unbelief. They were, number one, they were doubters. They were doubting in unbelief concerning the promise of Canaan, that land that flowed with milk and honey, that, that promised land, if you will. Amen. Given, amen, this commandment that was given to them, or given uh, to them by Moses that came from God, that, that He would lead them out of Egypt, and, and they would go on that exodus, and then they would wind up eventually, amen, inhabiting this land of rest or this land of Canaan. Here they were. The Bible said that they saw the works of God. They had experienced the miracles of God. Did they not? While that they were on their exodus many, many times, God had moved for them from water out of a rock to manna to the quail to the parting of the Red Sea to the cloud by day and the fire by night. And I guess the list would go on of miracles and, and works of God that they experienced and they witnessed and they saw how that God cared for the welfare of Israel. Amen. But yet the Bible said that this generation was a generation of doubters. Amen. And they erred in their heart through unbelief. Not only was Israel a generation of doubters, but Brother Nathan, they were also drifters. 
Amen. Because of this unbelief now, the Bible tells us that they drifted and they wandered in the wilderness some 40 years because of this unbelief. Amen. Because of this doubting, because of the erring that was in their heart. Amen. Unable to believe the promise of God. Amen. Now Paul here is using this generation as an example to you and I. Here they were. They had the promise of God. Amen. What was that promise? It was a Canaan rest. Amen. It was that lamb that flowed with milk and honey. But all the time, amen, Moses and Aaron, amen, was dealing with a generation of doubters. Amen. When they when they sent out the spies, amen, what did they do? They said, we cannot take the lamb. Amen. For there are giants in the land. Amen. Thank God for a Joshua and Caleb. Amen. That wouldn't stagger at the promise of God. Amen. But knew that God had promised them. Amen. Of land of rest. But listen, my friend. There was a generation of doubters. Amen. They had unbelief. They erred in their heart. And because of that doubt, it caused them to drift. It caused them to wander. Amen. Some 40 years in the wilderness. And the Bible said that God was grieved, amen, with that generation. Amen. The writer also is telling, amen, in chapter number three and also in chapter number four, amen, he expounds, amen, and talks about the danger, amen, of not entering in or coming short, amen, of the promise of God. Amen. Here was a generation, amen, that God was grieved with. He, now, now listen, there was a Sabbath rest amen, that was instituted. And uh, in chapter number 4 in Hebrews here, amen, the writer makes reference to a time when God, after His work of creation, amen, on the seventh day God rested. Amen, he saw everything that He had made and that it was good. Amen, and then God rested. And then God instituted a Sabbath rest amen, for the nation of Israel. You remember reading in the Ten Commandments, six days, shall out thy work. Amen. And then on the seventh day, amen, remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Amen. The Sabbath. Amen. Was that time of rest. Amen. For mankind. Amen. God instituted. Amen. The Sabbath rest. Man was commanded to rest. Amen. God rested. And He commanded man to rest. Amen. God instituted that day. Amen. To be kept holy. And Israel to remember to keep it. But did you know there were some, amen, that violated that rest. There were some, amen, that went out of bounds. Amen, I know there were consequences. Amen, there was the law. Amen, and there was judgment. Amen, but nevertheless, could we say tonight that there were some, amen, that failed at the commandment of entering into the rest. Amen, of God. Amen, and because of that, amen, they died. Amen, there was judgment. Amen, that came upon them because they violated the commandment to rest. There was a whole generation. Amen. There was people that violated that commandment. And then later we find out that there was a whole generation that failed to enter into that Canaan rest. Amen. And so we have, uh, amen, this commandment to rest. Uh, amen. God Almighty said, I rested. Uh, amen. He instituted it really for our being. Uh, amen. For our welfare. Uh, amen. For our benefit. Uh, amen. That we would take a little time out. Uh, amen. And rest. Uh, amen. And then we move from that Sabbath, that commandment to rest. Uh, amen. To that Canaan rest. Uh, let me read you Joshua chapter number 1. Uh, amen. Verse 13. Remember the words, amen, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, amen, saying, the Lord your God hath given you rest, amen, hallelujah, and hath given you this land, amen, Canaan, there it was, amen, milk and honey, amen, there it was, the promised land, amen, there it was, amen, that land that God had given them, amen, free from bondage, amen, free from Pharaoh, amen, free, amen, from the whip. Amen. They've been liberated. Amen. They came out. Amen. But at all of that, amen, there were some amen that could not believe what happened to them. They died. You hear me? They died. They died in the wilderness because they could not believe God and they entered not into His rest. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. There were some that didn't enter into a Sabbath rest and they died. 
There were some that didn't enter into a Canaan rest. Amen. And God allowed their carcasses to fall. Amen. In the wilderness. They were doubters. Amen. They were drifters. They were wanderers. Amen. They were in danger. Amen. But now in chapter number four, Amen. The apostle Paul is wanting us to know, Amen. That hey, Amen. You and I can come to a place where we fail to enter into the rest. Amen. Of God. Amen. Can I say tonight, my friend? Amen. That even in Canaan, Amen. There was there was uh, Amen. Uh, enemies, Amen. That had to be conquered. Even when they got in Canaan, there were battles to fight. Amen. There were wars that had to be waged. Amen. Listen, my friend. I'm glad for the Sabbath rest, and I'm glad for a Canaan rest. Amen. But ultimately, Amen. Our rest can only be realized when we come to Christ and we turn everything over. Amen. To a Savior. But can I say, my friend? Amen. How is God looking at our generation? There's some that are coming short. There's some that are stopping. Amen. From the rest of God. I need to preach to you here tonight. Amen. Glory to God, number one. Hey man, I want to kind of di- differentiate this here just a little bit. But I want to preach to you, the Lord to help me here tonight. Hey man, I understand that when we get saved, hey man, there is a rest. Hey man, at salvation. How many remembers that rest at salvation? Hey man, didn't it feel good? Didn't you feel light? Didn't it make you want to love everybody? Amen. It used to when people got saved. Amen. They used to love everybody. Uh, come on now. Amen. When we got saved, that salvation. Amen. Brother Radcliffe, there was rest. Amen. We felt that rest in our mind. Amen. That burden of sin was rolled away. Amen. We felt the chains fall off. We took off the old coat and we put on the new. And we got a new name written down in glory. Is there anybody in the house that remembers the rest that you got at the altar? When you came down burden and you left, he man lifted up. He man he took you out of the mire and put you in the choir and gave you a little rest. He man set you free. He man broke out a chain. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. He man for the rest that comes at salvation. That can I say if you're here tonight and you're tired and you're weary, I hear the Lord say, Come unto me, all ye that are weary, all ye that are heavy. All you that are laden, and I'll give you rest. I'll break you a chain. I'll set you free. I'll put your mind at ease. Amen. There's rest that ultimately is realized in Christ. Yeah, glory to God. You remember how your mind rested? Whew, hallelujah. Amen. You remember how you could sleep all night long? Hey Amen. There was rest that come at salvation. Hey Amen. You didn't lay there and worry about the coming of the Lord. You didn't lay there and worry about the judgment seat of Christ. You didn't lay there and worry. Hey Amen. Come on now. With that long list of sins. Hey Amen. There is rest. Hey Amen. That comes at salvation. Hey Amen. There is rest. Hey Amen. That ultimately is realized. Hey Amen. Only when that tired sinner. Hey Amen. Comes to Jesus and says, I've gone as far as I can go. I come on. You've been in the far country. And while you were there, you picked up a lot of baggage. Amen. But come lay. Amen. Thy burden down at the foot of the cross. Here, come on now. Amen. At the foot of Jesus. Amen. There's rest. Amen. Come unto me. Amen. All ye that are weary and heavy laden. And I. Amen. Will. All oh, that shouting ground. Amen. I will. Amen. I will. Amen. Give you rest. He didn't say he'd give us money. He didn't say he'd give us houses. He didn't say he'd give us land. He didn't say he'd give us fame. He said, I'll give you rest. Amen. That's what the drunkard needs. That's what the drug addict needs. That's what the fornicator needs. That's what the adulterer needs. Amen. They need rest. Amen. And it can only be in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a Sabbath rest. And even today, some have violated the Sabbath rest. Amen. Amen. There was a Canaan rest. 
Hey man, there's some that have literally hopped on a plane and flew to Canaan. Hey Amen. Seen all the sights. Walk for Jesus walked. Sat on the same rock that maybe he sat on. Hey man, walked in some of the temples. Come on now. Hey man, but they haven't yet found that rest. Hey man, there was a Sabbath rest and there was a Canaan rest. Hey man, but listen. Hey man, the Apostle Paul said, let us be alarmed. Hey man, let us therefore fear. Now I know that probably in context. Hey man, he was preaching to those, hey man, believing Jews or those converted Jews. Hey man, that had come to Christ. Hey man, he was telling them, hey man, don't fall back in that religion. Hey man, because the only way you can have rest. Hey man, it's come to Jesus. Hey man, the only way. Hey man, that you can have peace of mind. Oh, is in the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said, whatever we do, let's don't come short of it. Hey man, don't come short of it. Hey man, sinner friend. Hey man, backslider. Hey man, lukewarm. Hey man, don't come short of it. It's a promise. Hallelujah. I said it's a promise. Hey man, it's here for the asking. It's here for the receiving. It's here for you to have it in your mind and your soul and your body. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, don't come short of rest. Brother Bobby, would you help me? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to ask you tonight, how does God look at this generation tonight? There was a generation, the Bible said, Amen. There was a generation that grieved the heart of God. Amen. And the Bible said the reason that he was grieved at them, amen, is because, amen, they had unbelief and they erred. And now listen, and they would not enter into rest. They just wouldn't do it. And the thing of it was, Brother Jimmy, it was a promise. Come on now. But they came short of rest. Hey Amen. They didn't realize the rest. They didn't enjoy the rest. They didn't partake. Hey Amen. Of the rest. They came short of it. It was available. Oh, hallelujah. Hey Amen. There was a Sabbath rest. Hey Amen. There was a Canaan rest. Hey Amen. There's a rest. Hey Amen. That we find at salvation. But I won't tell you what. Hey Amen. In my heart, I felt like preaching. Hey Amen. Also, that there is a rest. That can only come to the church, amen, through submission. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You remember when you got saved and you felt that rest of God? Amen. What did the Lord say? He said, Come unto me, all. Oh, amen. Ye that are weary. Amen. What happened when you got saved? You submitted. You surrendered. Amen. To the call of God. And you came down to the altar and you found rest. Amen. Didn't you do it? Amen. Didn't that arise? Amen. You heard the voice. And you heard the call. Amen. You felt the tug of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you found rest at salvation. But we also find rest through submission. That same surrendering that when we were burdened and laden with sin and we responded to the voice of God and we found rest. Amen. Tonight in the house of God. Amen. There's some of us. Amen. That are needing rest. Uh, come on now. Amen. There's some of us. Amen. We're saved, Sister Trish. Amen. We're sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. But we need a little rest tonight. Amen. There's some in this house. Amen. Their mind is tired. Uh, come on now. Amen. There's some in this house. Amen. Your nerves are shot. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. But hey, amen. That same voice. Amen. That when you were in sin, Amen. Said, Come and I will. Amen. Come and I will. Amen. Come and I will. Amen. I hear him saying tonight, Amen. To a foot sore and weary church, Amen. Come unto me. Amen. And I, Amen. We'll give you rest. Could I say tonight, Let's don't come short of it. Hallelujah. Let's don't come short of it. Amen. It's a promise. Amen. God wants your mind to be at ease. Amen. God wants your heart to be at rest. God, Amen, wants to calm the trouble waters. Amen, in your soul. But the writer said, Amen, let's be alarmed. Amen, let's be afraid. Let us therefore fear, lest we come short of rest. Oh, hallelujah. 
Praise God. Now, we would never think of coming short of that eternal rest. Heaven, oh heaven. Won't always be a dream. Won't always be someday. It'll be reality. While there's none of us here tonight that would think about coming short of heaven, that eternal rest, that heavenly city, that celestial city. Amen. We all want to go there, don't we? Why we wouldn't think anything about coming short. Amen. Of heaven. Because we know it's going to be forever. Amen. Not one day. Not one month. Not one year, but eternal. Amen. Oh, we're going to rest. Amen. I don't know how it is. Amen. Sit down by the Amen. Tree of life. Amen. The old preacher used to say, dangle. Amen. My feet in the river of life. Amen. Reach up. Amen. Get some fruit. I don't know. Amen. How it's going to be. Amen. But brother, I know the war is going to be over. There'll be no more devil. Amen. No sorrow. Amen. No sickness. Amen. None of those things. Amen. Brother, you talk about resting. Hallelujah. For eternity. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There's an eternal rest. There is a heaven. Amen. There's a rest that remains for the children of God. And there wouldn't one of us think of coming short of that rest. How many wants to go to heaven? Sure we do. We don't want to come short of it. But I tell you what the Holy Ghost dealt with me about. Amen. Entering into His rest. Right here on a Sunday night. Right before Christmas. Right in the midst of the hustle and bustle. Amen. Right in the midst of the rat race. Amen. Amen. And the trouble. Amen. And the, uh, the disharmony. Uh, come on now. Uh, amen. And the things that are bothering the economic downturn. Uh, amen. Oh, and the shortage of work. Uh, uh, come on now. Uh, amen. And we find out that at Christmas, uh, amen, the generosity of Christmas uh, uh, turns into reality in January when we get our credit card. Uh, amen. Statement in the mail. Uh, uh, come on now. Uh, and we say, I bought what? Uh, and I did what? Uh, and I spent how much? Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, uh, come on now. Uh, we need a little rest here tonight. Uh, amen. We just need to enter into it. Uh, is there anybody in the house uh, that would agree with me? There have been revivals. Uh, there have been church services. Uh, there have been Sunday nights. Uh, when God said, I'm giving you a promise. Uh, all you got to do is enter into it. Uh, I'm going to soothe your mind. Uh, I'm going to calm your nerves. Uh, I'm going to touch it. Uh, amen. I'm going to give you a little rest. Uh, but you know what? I came short of it. Uh, I said I came short of it. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, amen. That's why Paul said, let's be alarmed. Amen. Let's be stirred up. Amen. Because, hey, hey, he said it was a promise that was left to us. How many's with us? How many's numbered with us? Aren't you glad you're one of them? Well, the promise of God is under you and your children and your children's children. All I'm saying tonight is somebody can enter in the rest. Somebody can enter in the rest. And I'm a preaching, don't come short of it. We were preaching. No, we weren't preaching. We went to camp meeting at Allentown one year. Rolled in there. Always loved going to Allentown. First camp meeting of the year. And uh, I love the fellowship and being with folks and hearing the preaching and resting. I, I always used to look forward to it. And on Monday night before Allentown meeting, we went to Brother Russell McDonald's church for their Monday night service. I was there with all the preachers, you know. And, hey, man, we we having a good altar service. And, you know how sometimes, you know, hey, man, everybody be gathered up around the front. And all of a sudden, Brother Russell McDonald, hey, man, picked me and pointed to me out of nowhere and said, Come here, Sean. Come on up here, Sean. I'm going to pray for you, Sean. I'm like, me? Yeah, you. Come on up here. I'm going to pray for you, Sean. Come on now. So I went on up there. I mean, you know, in my mind, I'm starting thinking, you know. Starting thinking, you know. I'm starting thinking, you know. Starting to think, what, what have I done? You know, what have I not done? I mean, hey man, what the Lord show him about me? I mean, this man in touch with God. Hey man, he's calling me out of all these preachers. He said, I'm going to pray for you, son. 
As he said, I'm going to pray for you. He said, the Holy Ghost talked to me. Spoke to me. Amen. Said thus and thus. And I don't remember exactly even what it was, but I, I really... Hey man, I, and later when me and my wife talked, she said, you know, I felt like for once he probably missed it because my husband ain't discouraged. You know, my husband ain't down. I mean, we're evangelists, man. I mean, we on that, we on that eternal vacation, drag that travel trailer all, don't we, brother? I mean, I mean, just, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a great, it's in the limelight. I mean, it's wonderful. Hey man, she, she told me later. Hey man, we was talking about it, you know, and yeah, come on now. So you know what I did? I stepped on up there. Brother Randy, and I said, just pray for me right here. Go ahead. I mean, I'm not going to argue with Russell McDonald. He said the Holy Ghost spoke to him to pray for me. Hey man, pray for me. And so they did. Hey man, no thunder rolled, no lightning flashed. Hey man, nobody shouted. Hey man, but listen, even that's been years ago, and even when I was praying about these verses, it seemed like the Lord spoke to me and said, did you come short? Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. Come on, you know how we are sometimes. Oh, come on, when we're in a crowd. Hey man, we're in a camp meeting. We're in a revival. Oh, come on now. Amen. And sometimes, amen, the Lord is saying, I want you, amen, to enter into my rest. Amen. I want you, amen, to enter into my joy. Amen. And my peace. And my Holy Ghost. Amen. And sometimes, brother, amen, we come short of it. That's what I'm preaching tonight. Amen. Don't come short of it. Amen. It's here. It's available. All you got to do is enter in. Amen. Amen to the rest of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Now sometimes, is it safe? Just hold me one minute. Sometimes I just need a little rest. Sometimes, Brother Brent, I just need just a little rest. Amen. Just need a good prayer. Amen. Just need... Feel them goosebumps big enough to hang a whale bucket on and whew, know the Holy Ghost is still with me. And sometimes I just need a little rest. Praise God. Hey man, but did you know tonight if you just need a little rest? Hey man, you just need a little rest. That's all, that's all. Hey man, no big sins, no backsliding. Hey man, no iniquity. Hey man, I mean, no, you know, you haven't dived off into the depths of degradation. That's not what I'm trying to a single in, but you just need a little rest. Oh, come on now. Hey man, but there's been other times. Hey man, come on now. I said, Lord, hey man, whoo, I'm really, really burdened about this. Oh God. Hey man, and then maybe in one service. Uh, the Lord had moved and I'd get the rest I needed. Uh, amen. Maybe I went to a revival and somebody testified. Uh, amen. The Holy Ghost spoke. Uh, it was just what I needed. Uh, oh, come on now. Uh, amen. But there's been other times. Uh, amen. I said, Lord. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, I don't know if I can get there. Uh, I don't know if I can enter into it. Uh, oh, come on now. The devil's been lying to me. Uh, amen. I've been troubled. Uh, amen. Lord. Uh, amen. I know it's there. Uh, amen. I know there's comfort. Uh, I know that there's divine strength. Uh, I know that there's hell. Now, come on now. But sometimes, brother, hey man, I wanted to go back over here and God said, no. Hey man, I want you here. Hallelujah. That God will feel the Holy Ghost. Hey man, trying to tell somebody, you need to enter in. You just need to enter in. It's a promise. I said, it's a promise. Hey man, God left it to us. God's given it to us. Hey man, there ain't no reason. Hey man, for you to be all shook up and all down and out, and all on the bottom, enter into the rest of God, enter into the glory of God, enter into the power of God, he said, I've left it unto you, I feel like tonight that God has got rest for any situation, Whew. Brother Lewis, you know what the Bible said about that generation? They had, it was preached to them, but they didn't profit from it. Come on now. Because they did not mix it with faith. Amen. In the Greek, that word mix 
means really it kind of describes or refers to what happens internally amen within our body when we consume food that breakdown process amen and the protein goes here amen and the good cholesterol goes here and the bad cholesterol is prayed out of it hopefully and the calories go somewhere else amen but that breakdown process amen that happens amen and because that it's mixed with the enzymes and the acidic amen things are there amen we gain nutrients and strength amen because amen we take it in come on now and so here's what he said yeah, come on now. He said it was preached to them. Amen. But it did not profit them because they did not mix it. Amen. With faith. And I tell you what, the devil, amen, has already told somebody tonight, you're going to be a fool, you go up there. Yeah, come on now. They're going to talk about you. Amen. All weekend long. I tell you what I do. I just enter in. I said, I just enter in. Hey, God Almighty, I think somebody in this house just needs to enter in. Maybe you need a little rest. Maybe you need a lot of rest. Amen. But the great thing of it is, it is here. I said it is here in the house of God tonight. Woo! Have you ever come short of it? But did you ever enter into it? Oh, yeah. It's got the Holy Ghost. Oh. Sweet rest. Oh, heavenly rest. Oh. Amen. Your troubles went away. Amen. Your hands went up and your head went up too. You got a little kick in your step and a smile on your face and a song in your heart. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I tell you where we are tonight. Amen. God's just waiting for somebody to enter in. Amen. Sometimes it's a young person that needs to enter in. Amen. Sometimes it's one of these young folks. Amen. Battling mind battles. Amen. In the world. Amen. In trouble. And the devil. And the Holy Ghost says, I got boy. Amen. Just watch you need. I got just what you need. Amen. Sometimes it's a pastor. Amen. That says, Lord, I need just a little rest. Amen. I need just a little thought. I need just a little anointing. Amen. Sometimes it's a deacon or a teacher or a preacher or a mama or a daddy. Hallelujah. It says, Lord, I came weary and I came tired. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter in. Is there anybody in the house that's going to enter in. Don't come sore at it. I said, don't come sore. Amen. Don't come sore of the rest that is in God. Come on, Sister Teresa. Woo! Feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Oh, I feel the rest of God. Woo! I said, I feel the rest. Amen. I said, I feel the rest. Amen. I know there's a heavenly rest. Amen. I know there's an eternal rest. Amen. I don't want to come short of that one. Amen. But I need a little rest. Amen. To go to heaven in. I need a little heaven. To go to heaven in. Amen. Don't come short of it tonight. Did y'all catch that? When the verse said, while it's called today. You ever thought much about that? Some 500 years later, after that generation died in the wilderness and didn't enter into Canaan, David even mentioned it again in the book of Psalms. He said, today, come on now. Woo! And then however many years passed, he meant from the psalmist David to the book of Hebrews, he meant an anointed man picked up his pen and wrote again. It's still called today. Oh, hallelujah. And that lets me know that you can have rest right now. Oh, tomorrow may never come. And yesterday is gone. Amen. But we got right now. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Needs a little rest in your mind. A little rest in your heart. Amen. Maybe you're a sinner and you need rest. Maybe you're a saint and you need rest. I hear the Lord saying, Amen, come unto me. Amen, all ye. Amen, all ye. Amen, all ye. And I will give you rest. Woo. Let's lift our hands right now and ask the Holy Ghost. Help somebody here tonight. 
Come on in. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, let us therefore fear. And then in the middle of the chapter, he said, let us therefore labor. Come on now. That means we're going to have to take the first step. Let us therefore fear. Let's be alarmed. And then I need some rest. Let's be aware. I need some rest. Uh, I'm tired. I've been fighting. Hey man, the sword clashing has been going on. Hey man, me and the devil have been meeting eyeball to eyeball. Hey man, and I need a little rest. Hey man, let us therefore fear. Let's be alarmed. Hey man, let's be weary and well done. Hey man, and then he said, let us therefore fear. Hey man, then he said, let us therefore labor. Hey man, verse number 16, I believe it is. Hey man, let us therefore labor. Hey man, let's do what we can to enter into that rest. And then it got down to the last of the chapter. Hey man, and it said, let us Therefore, come boldly. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Before the throne. I don't know about you, but I don't know any better place to get rest than to go right to the throne of God tonight. Hey, 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 hey. Amen. Get right in the glory world. Amen. Get right in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Enter into the rest of God. Go ahead and sing. Amen. Let's wait on the Holy Ghost just a minute. Oh, I'm going to rest. 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 After I have done my best, I'm going to rest. Rest, rest. Won't you do it? Jesus, rest. Fast you, I wouldn't come short of it. Fast you, I wouldn't come short of it. Just go ahead and obey the Holy Ghost, you Hey, hey, hey. I just go ahead and obey the voice of the Lord tonight. Hey, Just in the end. I'm on a rest, rest, rest. on Jesus, rest. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to rest. Don't you do it? Don't come short of it. I'm going to rest. Hey, man, don't come short of his rest tonight. I'm going to rest. Maybe you said, preacher, I'm tired. After I. Why don't you enter in tonight? I'm gonna rest, rest, rest on Jesus' rest. I'm gonna 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 rest. Well, I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna rest. Well, I'm gonna rest. After I have done my best, I'm gonna rest, rest, rest on Jesus' rest. Come on, church. Everyone that we are. Let's enter into the rest of God tonight, could we? Oh, let him help you. Let him help you. Let him touch you. Sinner friend, there's rest. Son of God, there's rest. Maybe we just need a little submission to him. Maybe we just need a little surrendering to him tonight. Lord, I need a little rest in my heart. I need a little rest in my mind. Oh, I need a little rest tonight, oh God. There's an eternal rest, but we're not there yet. There's a heavenly rest, but we're not there yet. There's a celestial city, but we're not there yet. But God is saying today, I've got rest for you. God is saying tonight, I've got rest for you. Amen. God is saying at this altar, amen, maybe you need a little rest. Maybe you need a lot of rest. Maybe you just need to lay back in the arms of Jesus. Enter into it. Don't come short of it. Don't come short of it, church. Don't come short of it. Sabbath rest, rest thank you for a Canaan rest that you promised us. But Lord, I'm glad that today I can have rest. I'm glad that right now I can enter into rest. Touch every mind, touch every heart, touch every soul. Oh, give us rest. He made me troubled. He made me never sign, never perplexed. Oh, we're discouraged at times, Lord. And we need a little rest tonight. Don't 
come short of it. That's what I want to leave with you tonight. Don't come short of it. Don't come short of the rest. Oh, it's a promise. It's been left to us. It's been given to us. How can we come short of God's promise? How can we miss the promise of God? Oh, why are we so tired? Why are we so weary? Why are we so troubled? When God said, I got rest for you, then you'll just get into it. If you'll just I'm come to me, rest. if you'll just submit to me, if I'm you'll just surrender rest. to me, then I'll give you rest. Then I'll give you the rest you need, the rest. Even the physical situation, the rest that will fix your problem. Amen. God said, come, come, come. Amen. And I will give you rest. Maybe you can't need a little rest. Maybe you can't need a little rest. Maybe you can't just need a touch.
Jesus. Don't come short of it. Don't come short of it. Let us therefore feel. Let us be alarmed. Let's not go home without it. Let's not live another day without it. He may touch my mind. The Holy Ghost got my mind, Lord. He may touch my nerves. He may touch my worries. He may touch my troubles. Ah, hallelujah. Soothe me, Lord. He may with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, let me enter into that rest. Let me enter into that rest. Let me enter into that rest. Let me enter into the rest of God. Ah, hallelujah. Come on, rest in Him. Come on, rest in Him tonight. Yeah, rest in Him. Enter in, enter in. Don't come short of it. Just 